still Fullerton. It's Fullerton PD. Fullerton PD back in pursuit, guys. Back up from CHP and Fullerton PD as he gets out of the vehicle, crawls out of the passenger window. The Lafayette car. He's trying to be forcing entry right now into a car. Forcing entry into a driving off with him, hanging off the car. Uh, the 60, excuse me, oh, oh, crashing into a Jeep, crashing into another vehicle here. Hello everyone and welcome back to the best of and another video of very exciting police chases. Today I got three of the wildest police chases of the last years. So let's start with the first one in the Denver metro area. This is a kidnapping and carjacking suspect that tried all his best to avoid arrest. The suspect drives completely reckless, carjacked multiple cars and almost crashed into several vehicles while speeding onto the oncoming traffic.
New footage shows how several law enforcement agencies traced a man later identified by police as Victor Tapete across two counties on a weekend pursuit that involved multiple carjackings. 28-year-old Tepete was facing manslaughter charges in a Central California man's death when Pittsburgh police encountered him. He escaped that night. The next day, Lafayette police approached a different vehicle reported stolen out of Pittsburgh. We have a white truck facing east on right eye of other reservoir. Police said Tepete bolted in a white truck, driving westbound in eastbound Highway 24 lanes. Probably about 60 miles an hour. Still uh, right shoulder. At Old Dam and Fish Ranch roads, Tepete allegedly crashed into an officer's car before he ditched the truck and hopped a retaining wall. He's running towards the freeway. Head on into a TCTC, head on into Lafayette unit, but out towards the freeway. Yeah, we need units on 24. He jumped on the 24. He's running across 24. We're in all green. Just got hit by a car. Need units on 24. On 24, got hit by a car. We're in all green. Heavy code 3 medic. Lafayette unit. Attempting to carjack a white sedan. Attempting to carjack a white sedan. Every unit on 24. He's running up to every car we can. All units to 24. Where was the head on with the Lafayette car? Medical for the Lafayette car. He's trying to be forcing entry right now into a car. Forcing entry into a the car is driving off with him hanging off the car. He's entering the tunnel. Left more of the tunnel. Or right more of the tunnel. Copy two fifteen to vehicle right door. What's the description on that car? The four door white Toyota Highlander. He's in the car. 215 it is in the tunnel now. White Toyota Highlander, 215 it in the tunnel. White with a, we lost visual, he's going through the tunnel. It's white with a sunroof. Police said Tepete made it to eastbound 580 from Highway 13 before exiting at Keller Avenue. with another vehicle again now he's running across the lanes of traffic running to the south southbound across 580 foot bill He's shedding clothes. He's running southbound up the uh, the freeway, uh, the side of the freeway. Southbound up the side of the freeway, shedding clothes. There, police monitored him by air until a canine unit and officers on the ground closed in and took him into custody. Contact. Making contact. Dog twenty dog bite. Copy dog bite. Uh, dog contact. Copy good canine bite. Was there additional? Uh, he looks like he's still fighting with him. Copy units in the physical. Twenty-one, take him into custody. He and he went to the end of the road where all of our patrol units are staged. Copy, taking him into custody in AFIRM, AMR to where the patrol vehicles are. Tepete was charged with assault with a deadly weapon, three counts of attempted assault with a deadly weapon, resisting arrest, carjacking, attempted carjacking, evading arrest, reckless driving, probation violations, possession of stolen property, trying to harm a deputy's canine, and felony hit and run. And now, get yourself some popcorn and a drink, because this police chase is the wildest one in the last time. Little spoiler, this police chase will last a couple hours and end life of multiple cars. Here are the most stunning and dangerous moments of this chase. Right off the bat, whether this vehicle belongs to him, it just doesn't make sense that he would just dump the vehicle for no other reason except for maybe the possibility of the fact that it might be running out of gas. So if the gas is low and if it's a stolen car, that would have made a lot of sense. Now he's parking it in a parking spot once again. Clearly, 
really, really trying to get rid of this vehicle and now running through this subdivision here. We'll try and get across here. It looks like it's going to be North Schooner Lane as he runs through these townhomes uh, in Anaheim. We'll try again. We'll try and get, if we widen now, we'll see. Okay. Let's stay on him. Stay on him right here. He's just running around this building here. Uh, looks like he's coming up on another couple of cars parked here. A van and a small red compact car. Looks like he's trying to break in to the van. He finds an open door. An open door in that white van. And now you can see the black and whites pulling up right behind him. He's blocked in. He's, he's inside the car, likely trying to hotwire it at this point. And you can see they have lit him up and basically blocked him in. If he tries to back out, it could get ugly, but in any event, officers now with their guns drawn, squarely wait, they had their eyes on him, they're just waiting for backup at this point and obviously trying to uh, bark some orders at him, hoping he gets out of the vehicle. Let's try and come around the other side if we can. If it's, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, there's a, we're actually on the north side of the Disneyland TFR, so we actually are going to be forced to hold this position right here. Unfortunately, we can't see the driver's side of that white van, but again, if you're just tuning in, there is a pursuit driver that is just, trying, look at this, hey, look at this, ramming into the front of that black and white, that is Fullerton Police, Fullerton Police, now trying to block him in as he puts it in reverse. He's going up and down, trying to, well, I don't, he has nowhere to go here. He's really trying to ram that car out of his way as he is now stuck in that parking spot. There's really nowhere for him to go. He's got a fence in front of him. The car, look at this. Look at the violently into reverse, ramming right into that Fullerton Police Department vehicle. That's right. Yes. This is very dangerous. He obviously, that officer has no choice but to use force if his life is in danger, but he is waiting for backup, and at this point really has very few options available to him. Here's another officer on the suspect's right rear flank. So now two officers, not sure if they both came from that same patrol car, but I only see those two officers on foot. And he is just going back and forth. Now he's created some room to escape here, and he's... He's going to probably try and ram in again or do a four-point turn and turn it around. He's got to turn it all the way around without hitting that tree, and he may have a couple minutes to do it here because what else What else can those officers do? They really don't have many options. Here comes the backup. Here comes backup. Head-to-head. -head. This is dangerous. Look at this. A head-on a head -on situation almost with that patrol car. Officers out of the vehicle, and now he's racing through the subdivision as more officers race into this neighborhood. Look at this. What is he going to do here? Around all of those black and whites, those are two uh, Fullerton police officers that are now going to try and turn around with him. Look at this. Look at what we are seeing here. He is now back on Coronet Avenue after evading four separate black and whites who were just pulling into the neighborhood to try and help that original officer uh, after a wild scene in that parking lot. We now have a brand new pursuit on our hands here as he has carjacked this vehicle and now uh, racing down Coronet Avenue at Maple Street. Once again, a dangerous situation on the hands of Fullerton police here. Over. Over the median into oncoming lanes of traffic through a parking lot here. He's going to come out on Rosecrans Avenue, going the wrong way, wrong way on Rosecrans, wrong way on Rosecrans. It's a median. He's going to have to jump. The, oh, my goodness. Look at this. He's going to probably shift over to the correct lanes here, but he had nowhere to go there, didn't jump the median, just went the wrong way, is now on the westbound side of Rosecrans Avenue, heading back towards the freeway. He's going to come up on the 5 freeway, approaching north walk uh, if he continues in the westbound direction here. Looks like another uh, another uh, crazy turn there onto a surface street into a parking spot uh, for no reason whatsoever. Uh, just went right over the curb there. I mean, there really wasn't really anybody in his way. I'm not even sure what's going through this guy's mind. This is just very unpredictable. Impossible to set up for a spike. Look at this. Oh, oh, Off-roading, trying to get around traffic. 
Yeah, almost slammed into that tree. Now, in a, look at this, fishtailing through the parking lot, drifting through an empty warehouse parking lot back onto Marquette Avenue. He is having a lot of trouble with this vehicle, guys. Yeah, not composed at all. It looks like he might even have a flat tire. Look at this, there are pieces, oh, he's lost his tire. He's on his rim. He's on uh, that left rear tire is uh, almost down to, uh, I don't know if there's any tread left, but he's uh, looks like he's got some sparks coming off occasionally. You saw some of that rubber flying off, and now he's going to have even more trouble, even more trouble maintaining control of this vehicle as he continues northbound on Marquardt Avenue. Uh, right along the wash here, there's a golf course off of the nose, but we are in a commercial area, it's going to turn into a more residential street if he continues, but there is a black and white now behind him, code three with lights and sirens on, about maybe 50 feet back. Let's go ahead and widen out and see which agency that is that's behind him. That looks like uh, uh, maybe still Fullerton. It's Fullerton PD. Fullerton PD back in pursuit, guys. Uh, yeah, we're, we're in the Norwalk area, I think, now, as he comes up. Well, no, he's not in Norwalk yet, but look at this. He's going through that gas station without any tire on that left, right, that left rear wheel. Almost struck several vehicles there. A miracle nobody's gotten hurt yet. But you can see he is really uh, in a jam now. Lots of traffic ramming into all of these cars here. Again, this is northbound Carmenita Road now, and he's, it's, it's not moving. He's stuck. Now he's stuck. It looked like he's stuck. Sparks flying, and that patrol, that officer right there, has to treat this with kid glove care, and likely going to have to step away from his vehicle, because we already seen him uh, put it in reverse once and ram into that uh, other patrol car. Right now, he's trying to go forward, and he's not going anywhere at all. It looks like the van is now stuck. Yeah, this, this is likely to start a fire. You can see those, those rims are starting to glow. Uh, there's certainly more on the way over here. Right now, if we widen it just a little bit, we can confirm just that one black and white. Just the one black and white. We're at uh, Placid Drive, north, uh, northbound Carmenita Road, and he is now stranded here. We'll see how this officer deals with this. He's likely just going to wait for backup, and right now it doesn't appear as though that van is going anywhere. Uh, he's probably not aware... That's right. You've got to wonder, you've got to wonder if he's thinking about getting out of this van and trying to hijack another one. You've got to at least wonder whether that's going through his mind. He's probably not aware. Well, now he's aware. I was going to say, he might not even be aware that his wheel's on fire, but certainly he's aware, aware of the fire under the hood. More pieces flying out there as this vehicle is starting to come apart. I'm thinking it came from the, well, it could be, because, I mean, where else would that smoke be coming from? But I don't think any shots have been fired yet, so that probably is not the case. But that wheel, that left rear wheel, is also creating uh, some metal as well. So it could have come from the rear, but now I've got to wonder uh, if that transmission is just uh, reached its limit, and that's what's producing the, the smoke here. Not sure, but in any event, it has overheated and uh, it looks like the vehicle is now disabled. Additional units now pulling into position here. So some backup from CHP, backup from CHP and Fullerton PD. As he gets out of the vehicle, crawls out of the passenger window and is now running for it northbound Carmenita Road. Running up northbound Carmenita at Leffingwell Road as he crosses the street. Very dangerous situation here where we have no information, but here comes somebody running out the front. Look at this. Look at this. A confrontation inside the house, a family home, and now we're going to come around the front here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. He's in the truck. He's in the truck. 
He's in the truck. He, he just he just got in that truck. There's a dog under that truck. Oh my goodness, look at this. He just stole the, oh my God, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. This is incredible. Unbelievable. I cannot believe what we are witnessing, guys. They are going to have to get creative here because this person is abs. Look at this. Just ramming into cars, additional bumpers flying off of the, that other vehicle. And now he's, uh, I believe, westbound on Leftingwell Road. From here on, the police tries different tactics to surround the suspect. But the problem is that the suspect is driving very dangerous and police officers can't do pit maneuvers without endanger other people in this area. About seven black and whites at the major intersection making a right turn on Norwalk and there it is, look at this. And now they're behind him. Hot pursuit again now on Norwalk Boulevard, guys. These are gonna be LA County Sheriffs, that's correct. I think I counted at least six, at least six that I saw. We don't know that. That was a uh, that was a guess on my part. That's what I that's what I have a feeling. But that means nothing. We have nothing to confirm that it was a stolen vehicle. Only to say that they tried to pull him over for some reason. Not sure what that reason is. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh my goodness! A close call there onto the median, over the over the median, and now continuing after missing that cross traffic just by a hair, just by a hair. Look at this, officers able to shut down that intersection. We'll see if we start to see that happen again. If the officers are now shutting down traffic at intersections so that there is no cross traffic and the suspect doesn't crash into innocent shutting drivers. Down these intersections ahead of them. It's a very hard thing to do, by the way. It's very, very good that they were able to do that for two intersections in a row. They can't continue that, but if they can continue to try and leave leapfrog his trajectory along Colima Road here, that will help things dramatically. It looks like they've got another intersection uh, blocked off here at Puente Hills and Colima, so it's going to be another dangerous situation, but no cross traffic as those deputies have shut down the intersection, giving him a wide berth to speed through the red light and now continuing westbound on Colima Road. But just the mere act of shutting down the freeway it saves lives because it stops all of the traffic, whatever the light traffic so signal says, everybody comes to a stop and this guy can just speed right through these intersections and not kill anybody. So he's continuing at 90 miles per hour on Colima here and here come those black and whites. Now they're closing in on them. Another residential neighborhood with very narrow streets. Uh, it looks like he's not, okay, so that's El Rancho Drive and uh, a series of deputies now following him into this neighborhood, or at least two. Okay, so these are the two that were coming. They turned around with them. Those original deputies, just to put this in perspective, appear to have fallen back. They could not keep up with his driving on Hacienda Road, but those two that were coming in the opposite direction are now right behind him. So two brand new deputies engaged in this hot pursuit along El Dorado Avenue here in Hacienda Heights. We are, uh, it looks like a dead end. It's a cul-de-sac. This is scary. This is scary. A cul-de-sac, they're going to come face to face with this suspect. And you guys know, and our viewers know, what he's capable of in this situation because he's already rammed into several vehicles, including deputy vehicles. And there he is again, right through, almost missing them. And now, oh man, continuing out, right out of the neighborhood, he's going to get right out. I mean, he's weaseling his way out of these predicaments. And I just don't know how much longer this could go on. I just can't, can't fathom it. Nothing they could do. Yeah, right, right. Uh-oh. He's going to come head to head here. He's going to come head to head with another sheriff's deputy, and he's just going to go around him. That's the protocol, and you can see they're following protocol. They're pulling over, letting him around. They're not going to box him in, and part of the reason, guys, is because these tactics, look at this. He's going out of the neighborhood where there are about a half a dozen. Oh, 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 right through those deputies again, just missing them. 
Unbelievable! There's about a Here you see that any movement or try to box the suspect in could end deadly so that the police is forced to stick to a passive tactic. At the moment, to get him off the road. I can tell you that part of this is tactical protocol within the department because there are other agencies that would treat this a little bit differently, but right now they are sticking with the book and basically just trying to... Okay, I'm just being... I've just told that he uh, is facing now three charges of ADWs, assault with a deadly weapon on a law enforcement officer, on top of all the other crimes that we've witnessed here this afternoon, but just to kind of add it to the list. But you can see how many cops are pulling in here. It's unbelievable. And about a dozen black and whites behind him. But that tire, I think his back left tire is... Uh, uh, he did hit something. Look at that. More sparks flying. Not sure if it's coming from the wheel well or if it's coming from that equipment, but something is making metal, and uh, I got to wonder if, if all that stuff in the bed of that pickup truck was strapped down. Very possibly not. We've already seen one weed whacker. It, it, barely. Barely maneuvering. You see, if we're very fortunate that he's on a straightaway section of street here, but if he has to make any, any tight turns at any speed, it's going to be very difficult for him. But at the very least, you're going to start to see that, that wheel come apart. And eventually, the axle won't be able to turn. But that's obviously a heavy-duty truck. It's built uh, for all kinds of situations. And these are uh, not easy to break down. But you can see, he's definitely testing the limits of this truck. And now, without that front left tire, it's only a matter of time. Now, those deputies have fallen back once again because he's blowing through these red lights, continuing at a high rate of speed, 70 miles per hour, at what cannot be more than about a 45 mile per hour speed limit. And he's blowing through all these all these intersections with cross traffic. So many close calls. It's a miracle we haven't seen anybody get hurt. Now under the freeway. That I believe was that was the 605. Uh, the 60, excuse me. Oh, oh, crashing into a Jeep, crashing into another vehicle here, and and wiping him out off the road. He just took out another vehicle, rammed into him, heavy damage. I hope that person's okay. Up on the curb, and now he's trying, look at this, again, ramming into more cars and trucks. Head on, head on, head on. Unbelievable, head on with another car. And the, here comes, the, here comes uh, uh, not even a pit maneuver, but they rammed into it from behind, into a gas station, folks getting gas at the corner of Gale and Hacienda, into a gas pump, and now he's gonna try and get out probably, but he, no, he's gonna put it out in reverse, back in reverse towards that deputy. Look at this, ramming into the front end, they're shooting, they're shooting at him, they're shooting, we're gonna widen out, and they are now firing into the cab of that pickup truck. Unbelievable. They are using force, deadly force is being employed at this moment to try and stop this madness in the middle. They are stopped, they have stopped, the, wheels, the wheel is off, the, that front left wheel is off. Yep, is it still going? Still going, so his foot's on the gas? Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Foot on the gas, bullets flying through that truck and now we'll see as they surround the vehicle, multiple teams and canine units already on the scene here, surrounding the vehicle, at least the rear of the vehicle. They can't surround it completely, obviously. They don't want to create a crossfire situation. Yes, yes. Somebody's hurt. It looks like somebody, that's the driver. That's the driver. It looks like the driver of that car that he rammed head on into. It looks like he's being arrested. He's being detained for some reason. Not sure what that's about, but we'll focus on the truck for now. We'll focus on the truck, obviously more to that story, but uh, clearly this ending in a crash with several vehicles, including that one right there. And you can see he's still gassing it, creating a lot more, sp a lot more smoke. The vehicle's not going anywhere. It's completely disabled. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that last officer tried to ram into him intentionally, uh, but then he put it in reverse and ran right back into him. There were multiple, I mean, if you ask how many black and whites have been hit, I've lost count, quite frankly. So I can't tell you exactly how many. 
There were a whole bunch of parked cars and cars in traffic at the end of that pursuit before that major intersection. Uh, and there was one Jeep, a white Jeep uh, soft top that he got wiped out completely. I have a feel, I hope he's okay. They're gonna have to check on him. Well, I mean, you know, the, when you think about the number of lives that he has put in danger over the last 90 minutes, uh, I mean, the, the, it's, it's just bewildering. But in any event, here comes an arrest team. They're gonna approach with shields up, shields up, guns drawn, and they've got tactical tools at their disposal if they face any resistance. But the first order of business is going to be clearing that driver's side window. The glass breaker is being employed, ramming the driver's side window, and now getting a much clearer view that we will keep somewhat... There is movement. He's moving. He is moving. I saw his hand. The back seat appears clear. Now they'll try. It looks like he's injured. And it looks like they're going to make an attempt to open that door, but it's not open yet. Uh, they may just pull him through the windshield. They may pull him through that window, guys. I have a feeling they will just pull him right through the driver's side window without bothering with the door. Uh, we don't know what kind of condition he's in, but you saw what I saw, which was his hand moving. It looked like he maybe had crawled into the passenger seat, and there you go. They're going around the passenger side to to bring him out. Wow. Stepping out of the vehicle. Whoa. Whoa. What in the world? I'm sorry. I'm speechless. I mean, this is just, uh, you know. Uh, if that wasn't an exciting police chase, show me a chase that is. Incredible. It was an actual miracle, absolutely. <laughs> the suspect is finally arrested and luckily there was no bigger crash that injured innocent people. Subscribe and give a thumb up if you enjoyed and want to see more of those videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.